Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin. Muhammadu Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Tasliman kathiran kathira. For my badu, my dear brothers and sisters, the topic that you have given me of uh, taqwa and tawakkul, and you asked me to speak on that, this is like asking somebody to give a lecture on cycling, on bicycling or to give a lecture on swimming. There's only one way to learn how to swim, how to keep yourself from drowning, how to save your life, and that is by swimming. Uh, you don't learn how to swim by listening to a lecture. So I would suggest to you that take my lecture, not as something useless, inshallah it will not be, but as something that will give you and should give you a frame of reference to work on going forward. So. Whatever I am telling you, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put uh, khair in this and barakah in this and to be pleased with it. Uh, I want you to look at it and see it as something which is for us to practice in our lives going forward. It's not something that you listen to the lecture and uh, you acquire you know, a few more references and a few more ayat and a couple of nice stories or something uh, and you go home, no. That would be completely uh, pointless and useless as far as uh, you are concerned because it will, you, you will not benefit from it. So sit here and listen to this with the intention of practicing it uh, in your lives and I remind myself uh, to do the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla who sent us into this world for a purpose. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave us to guess what that purpose is. Many times people say, well, I'm trying to discover my purpose. There's no need to discover your purpose because Allah has told you what your purpose is. And the purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned and told us was, Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah said, I have not created the jinn and the ins, the jinns and the human beings for anything other than my worship. So our purpose in this dunya is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jalla Jalaluhu, to worship him alone because he is the only one worthy of worship. Not to join partners with him because he has no partners. Islam is the acceptance of a reality. <coughs> we, are not asked, we are not asked in Islam uh, to just believe something, uh, you know, as a blind belief or believe something because somebody said that. Islam is the... Um, is the, is the acceptance of reality. And what is the reality? The reality is La ilaha illallah. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the Rasul, is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is Khatam al-Nabiyyin wa Sayyidul Mursaleen. He is the last and final of the messengers and the Anbiya. And he is the leader of them. The foundation of ibadah is the attitude of ubudiyah. Ubudiyah is bondage. Ubudiyah is slavery. Now, I, slavery by, has, a, has a very negative connotation and it should have a negative connotation because slavery is, uh, if, as I always say, if slavery is not wrong, then nothing else is wrong. Because uh, slavery is uh, completely and totally uh, in Islam, it is prohibited for anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person cannot enslave himself to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not talking about somebody who is uh, captured by someone else and, and, and taken into slavery. The responsibility is not of that person. But I'm saying I cannot enslave myself to somebody uh, voluntarily uh, except, for, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason why uh, many of you who have, who have, alhamdulillah, listened to me many, many times, uh, whenever this English translation of the Quran is done, where the word Abdullah is translated as servant of Allah. I always object to that because Allah did not call us, Allah did not call us Khadimullah. Allah did not call us Khuddamullah. Allah called us Abdullah, Ibadullah. Right? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and called his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his Abd. Right? Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi. 
ليلا من المسجد الحرام الى المسجد الاقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من اياتنا انه هو السميع البصير ان سوره البني اسرائيل سوره اسراء فاست اير الله سبحانه وتعالى قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هيز عبد دي عبوديه اوف الله بينغ ا سليف اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى جل جلاله از دي فاندامنتال برينسيبل ان اسلام ناو واي ام سينغ سو ماتش اباوت ذس اند واي ذات از سو امبورتنت is because this is the essence of tawakkul a servant of allah can never have tawakkul so decide for yourself a slave of allah if he really understands that he is a slave of allah he cannot but have tawakkul i tell you why who is a servant right all of you who are employed anywhere in urdu what do you call it नौकरी तो अगर आप नौकरी कर रहे हैं तो आप क्या हैं आप नौकर हैं किसी के आप नौकर हैं है? है कि हम तो एक बड़ा गलत लफ्ज इस्तेमाल करते हैं कहते वो हमारा मालिक है अरे मालिक अल्लाह है भाई अल्लाह के साथ तो आप अपने आप को नौकर बनाते हो और इंसान को मालिक बोलते हो तो वह करो इस्तेफार करो वो आपका मालिक नहीं है आप तो उसकी कंपनी में उसकी दुकान में उसके बकार में आप नौकरी कर रहे हो वो आपको तनख्वाह दे रहा है नाउ फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु आर नॉट फॉर्चुनेट इन टू अंडरस्टैंड उर्दू आई लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दिस होल थिंग इन 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 इंग्लिश व्हेन यू से यू आर इन उर्दू वी हैव दिस वर्ड नौकर नौकर इज द वर्ड यूज फॉर एम्प्लॉई राइट एम्प्लॉई सर्वेंट ना इन उर्दू वी एड इन सर्ट टू इंजरी वेर द एम्प्लॉयर we call him malik meaning owner now an employer is not an owner right so please this is not semantic this is this is the essence of abudiyat please understand this thing this is not semantics so who is your owner your owner is only one before whom you before whom you bow your head before whom you make such that who with who, about who we say what la ilaha illallah لا اله الا الله من بعد لا رازق الا الله لا مالك الا الله لا خالق الا الله there is no one who is my razik except allah there is no one who is my malik my owner except allah there is no one who created me and who is my khaliq except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called his nabi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam who is deserving of the biggest and best honors that can ever we can ever imagine what did he call him abdullah abdi he his slave he did not say khadimi he he did not even say rasuli he think about that think about that that if this aya was subhanallah zi asara bi rasuli he min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa there is no problem with that aya grammatically speaking that would be perfectly fine and also in reality it would be fine because rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the rasul of allah allah did not say that abdihi because the being the abd of allah is the highest possible honor that any creature can have that his rabb jalla jalaluhu points to him and say this is my slave hadha abdi and that's why my rab jalla jalalahu in terms of forgiveness what did he say qul ya ibadi say to them oh my slaves he did not say qul ya khuddami those who make this translation of 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 of, uh, of abd as servant you should ask them Abd the slave. Now, why am I making such a big song and dance about this? Because a servant, number one, listen carefully. In the bed, a servant enters service voluntarily. You want a job, you go and apply. I want to work for GE. I want to work for IBM. I want to work for Microsoft. Bill Gates doesn't come and grab me by the back of my neck and take me and, and employ me. No, I have to apply for a job, right? So a servant is somebody who applies for a job voluntarily. 
he or she enters the service of somebody. Number one. Number two, for that service, there is a specific contract. You will do this and you will be paid so much. So now if I am working for somebody and, I, and my salary say is, is uh, you know, $10,000 a month, but now I have run into some expenses. You know, I got sick or something happened or some reason I, ha I have some, uh, uh, I have a need for more money. I can go to my boss, I can go to my employer and I can ask them to give me a loan or I can ask them to, you know, give me some charity or something. But I cannot say this is part of my employment contract. It is not. It's not part of your employment contract. If your employer has mercy on you, if he is generous with you and if he gives you something more, then this is his generosity. You can't demand that. So, servant is somebody who enters service voluntarily. Number two, there is a specific, clear, demarcated uh, return for that service. Number two. Number three, a servant can leave the service anytime he wants. Right? There's no, even whatever employment contract in the world, go look it up. You can write a resignation letter and you can walk out of your job absolutely anytime you want. There may be a, a, a notice period or something. I have to give notice a month in advance, three months in advance or whatever. Uh, there may be some, uh, you know, if you leave without that, then the employer can dock your pay or whatnot. But the point is that you can leave the service of any employer that you work with at any point in time. Now take these three things and apply this to a slave. Who is a slave? Does any slave enter voluntarily, as I told you, I am your slave? No. Because the owner of the slave, Malik, is only for the slave. Because the slave is the property of the owner. He belongs to the owner. What is the meaning of property? Now, I've got this cup. If this cup is my property, what does it mean? It means I can take it and smash it. I can take it and throw it. Today I'm drinking coffee in it. I can use it for some other purpose. I can plant a tree in it. I plant to plant in it. Who can question me? Nobody can question me because it's my property. I can do what I want with it. Right? But if I'm sitting in a restaurant and I'm using the same cup, it belongs to somebody else. I can't take the cup and, and, and smash it. Oh, I felt like doing it. Yeah, sure. Okay, now you pay for it. So, the point is, that as far as a slave is concerned, the slave is owned by the owner. Now, what does that mean? We come to the second point, which is how much money or how much sustenance, how much support is the employer supposed to give to the employee only as much as in the employment contract? Come to slavery. How much and what is the owner of the slave expected to do or give to the slave? How much? As much as he or she needs, irrespective of any boundaries. Right? Totally. Whatever the slave is needs, whether it is food, whether it's medicine, whether it's education, whether it's Welfare, whatever be the need of the slave, it is the duty of the owner to fulfill that need without any question. So second point, ownership. And what does that imply? It implies complete and total care. Third one, a servant no matter from where, can resign and leave, can walk out of that job anytime he or she wants. Can an abd, can a slave resign and leave? Sorry, I'm no longer your slave. Goodbye. No slave can do that. No slave can do that. So now you decide. Are you a servant of Allah? Or are you a slave of Allah? If you think you are a servant of Allah, then I suggest don't waste your time. Don't sit in this lecture. Go home. 
deal with that. But if you are an Abdullah, an Amatullah, if you are a slave of Allah, then sit and rejoice and say, Alhamdulillah, I am not alone. I am the milkiyat. I am the property of the one who, was, who is Samuel Basir. Innahu who was Samuel Basir. Uh, why did Allah use these two, these two sifat of his sifat al, sifat al aliyah? Why did he use Samuel Basir? I don't know why I'm not giving you a reason. Allah knows why he used it. But my understanding of that is that for the fulfillment of every need, it is necessary for the fulfiller to know about that. And in our context, how do we know about something? Because we hear about, because we hear about it or we listen to it or we see it. Sami wal Basir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Sami wal Basir. Bil Ibad. Latifum Bil Ibad. Yarzuku man yasha. Wahuwa latiful khabir. So the point I want to begin with is decide who you are. Are you a servant of Allah or are you a slave of Allah? My brothers and sisters, I am a slave of Allah and I ask my Rabb Jalla Jalaluhu that he gave me the power to say this, that he should accept me as a slave. I think about this. Final point, difference between servant and slave. First point, for a servant, volunteers to serve. Number two, for that service, he gets some consideration, which is specific. Point number three, he can walk out anytime he wants. And point number four is he has some defined duties. Right? Defined duties. When you join a company, what do you join? You join in a specific job. So if you join as a security guard and they tell you, here is a car, drive it. You might do it out of the goodness of your heart because you are a nice guy. You want to be, you want to be cooperative, but it's not your job. And if you say, sorry, this is not my job. You are perfectly within your limits and perfectly within your rights to say that. But for a slave, is there a specific job? I own you. I give you the example, this cup. I can drink coffee in it. I can use it for, to carry water for wudu. I can, I can put a plant in it. I can put flowers in it. I can do what I want. So for a servant, who decides what he will do? The servant himself. Because he has signed on the employment contract in which there is, the, the job is defined. But for a slave, Yesterday I was cleaning the house. Today my, my owner says, go do, do something in the garden. I'm gone in the garden. So to, yesterday I was, what, what was I? I was, I was doing some work in the house, right? I was cleaner, house cleaner. To, today my job changed. I am gardener. Then the next day, my, my, my master says, please teach my children. So now what happened to me? I am now a teacher. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond any, any uh, uh, examples we give. But the slave, what is the, what is the job definition of the slave? What is the job definition of the servant? Whatever is written in the employment contract, not more, not less. What is the job definition of the slave? Whatever my master wants. Whatever my master wants. What is the desire of the slave? To please the master. That's it. To please the master. End of the year, performance appraisal of the servant, the employee, is based on what? Is based on his list of duties. Did he fulfill them or did he not fulfill them? If there is such a thing as a performance appraisal of a slave at the end of the year, what would that happen? What would, what would that have? It would have only one line on it. Hey, subhanallah. Only one line in it. What's the line? Did he please the master? Khalas. That's it. 
It doesn't matter what he did. It does not matter what he did. Did it please the master? Did he or she please the master? If they please the master, pass. If they did not please the master, fail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to please him. So please correct this thing in your, in your minds, in your hearts. We are Ibadullah. I did not say that. Allah said it. Find me one single time in the Quran where Allah used the word Khadim with regard to the people, with regard to us, vis-a-vis -vis himself. And look for the word Abd. Look for the word Ibad. Right? So the foundation of Ibadah is the attitude of Ubudiyah, which is bondage. Which is the result of a state of heart called Taqwa. What is taqwa? Taqwa is not fear of Allah. This is another one of the uh, one of the, the, the injuries that is done to the translation of the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullah haqqa tukati. Oh, you believe fear Allah as it is his right to be feared. Where is the word fear? Allah said, have taqwa of Allah. What is taqwa? Taqwa is not fear of Allah. Taqwa is fear of displeasing the one I love the most. Now, what is my dalil for this? Many of you have heard this many times, but alhamdulillah. My dalil is very simple. My dalil is fear by itself is a negative emotion. Fear is a negative emotion. Ask anyone who fears something, whether they love that thing. People fear snakes. Do they love them? Those who love snakes don't fear them. Ask a child who goes to school and who fears a teacher. Do you love that teacher? No, I don't love the teacher. Do you obey the teacher? Yes. But if you don't love the teacher, why do you obey the teacher? Because the teacher will beat me. Because the teacher is a nasty piece of action, that teacher will beat me. Will beat me. So I obey the teacher, but that doesn't mean I love the. I don't love the teacher. I obey the teacher because I have no choice. Right? But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about us? About the Muslimin, about the Mu'minin? Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Allah said the believers are those who don't just love Allah, but they love Allah over and above more than anyone and anything else. Hmm? More than anyone and anything else. So now we have this issue of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anyone and anything else. On the other hand, we also have Khashyatullah, which is the awe, the awe and majesty of Allah in our hearts. There again, it's, it's, it resembles fear just as excitement resembles fear. I always say excitement is fear which anticipates a happy ending. Somebody who's doing skydiving, ask this person, at least the first time you do it, right? Ask, ask this person, uh, were you afraid or, or what? Of course he was afraid. Somebody who's doing rappelling, uh, I've never done skydiving, but I've done uh, rappelling and I've done, uh, you know, abseiling. First time I did that, was I afraid? Of course. But you still do it. Why? Because you anticipate. You, you're not doing that to commit suicide. You are doing it because you know this rope will hold. And you know that this ending is going to be good. And walking off the cliff, with rocks 100 meters below me, not because I want to die, no, but for the fun of it, to learn a skill. So fear, khashya, is, is fear of a kind. It's not fear as in running away. It's not fear as in fear which inspires hatred, which is the regular normal fear that we have. It is the sense of awe and majesty of Allah in our hearts, which looks like fear, but really it is awe and majesty of Subhanallah, Wallah, this is my Rabb, this is my Allah, Subhanallah. 
So now you bring these two apparently contradictory or apparently opposed ideas together of love of Allah, Ashad Hubba Lillah, and the Khashyat of Allah. Inna Allah Allah said the people from the Nas, from the from the Ibad, from the from the slaves of Allah who have the maximum khashya are those who know Allah the most, are the ulama. They are the people who have the greatest ilm. Those who have knowledge, what is the sign that they have knowledge? That they have khashya. And ulama in this case doesn't mean graduates from some university. It means the person who has the khashyat of Allah, that person is an alim. So here, hub and khashya. When you put them together, you have taqwa. So therefore, how do you define taqwa? Taqwa is the fear of displeasing the one I love the most. So the more I love Allah, the more I fear to displease Allah. Jalla jalla. This is taqwa. So taqwa therefore is the supreme, the overpowering, the overarching concern about the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalalu in all matters because we love him more than anyone and anything else and because we look forward to the meeting with him jalla jalalu. Right? My brothers and sisters, please understand that, alhamdulillah, uh, taqwa is the fundamental. It is, as I said, it is a state of heart. Now, what produces taqwa? As I mentioned to you, the khashyat of Allah and the hub of Allah. The awe and majesty of Allah and the love of Allah. These two together produce taqwa. How do you get khashyat of Allah? By recognizing the glory and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you recognize the glory and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By trying to know Allah. How do you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do you try to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By number one, by reading the Quran al karim By understanding the Quran al karim by reflecting and introspecting about the Quran al karim by ibadah, kasratu sujood, by increasing our, especially our sujood, especially our voluntary prayers, especially tahajjud, by being very particular about the faraid salah, by ensuring we pray all the sunan muakkada, all the sunnah salah, and then in addition to that, by praying Salat al-Duha, by praying Awabin, by praying Tahajjud, more than anything else by praying Tahajjud. This puts the khashyat of Allah, a sense of the glory and majesty of Allah in our hearts, and it connects us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you say to yourself, Alhamdulillah, I am the slave of my Rabb Jalla Jalla. My Sheikh Nuri used to say, Whenever, for example, if somebody said, you know, oh, this is, uh, th th there's this epidemic and there's this big problem happening in the world and uh, if I'm, I'm driving somewhere, traffic is bad, people are having accidents. He used to say, Allah pe bharosa rako, jo hora hota rahega, tera ko nahi hoga. Eh? Allah nizam ko nahi badalega, magar tujhe bachayega. Think about this. May Allah fill his khabar with nur. See this perspective. He says Allah will not change the whole country. Whatever Allah has decided and whatever is the is the usul of Allah, Allah will that will happen. But Allah will not allow harm to come to you. When Allah wanted to save Ibrahim salam from the fire, he didn't put out, he didn't, he did not put out the fire. He saved Ibrahim. Salam. The fire burnt the ropes that Ibrahim salam had been tied with. The fire continued to retain its capacity to burn. That wasn't decreased. That was not removed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
khashiyat is to understand this and say alhamdulillah ana abdullah i am the abd of allah my rabb will not allow anything bad to happen to me because he said be the hill khair in his hand there is only goodness so you get khashiyat by reflecting on the glory and majesty of allah how do you get hub how do you love allah by reflecting on his blessings do an exercise just stop as i'm talking to you take a deep breath another one now reflect on this those people who have been affected by corona by covid who are lying in hospitals on ventilators they cannot breathe like you breathe just now this breathing that you are doing they can't do it that inability to breathe is the problem may allah save them may allah cure them may allah completely relieve them from the suffering and bring them back home safe and sound if they die they will die of respiratory failure inability to breathe but you just took a breath you took two breaths and you continue to breathe and may allah keep you that way inshallah this is the blessing of allah do we thank allah for this do you and i fall in sujood and say ya allah alhamdulillah kullu hamd lak ya rabbal alamin that you allowed me to breathe how do you develop hub of allah love of allah by reflecting on the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu by reflecting on those blessings over and over again everything around us look around you see what allah has given there is the beauty of the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every grain of sand in every wave of the ocean in every gust of breeze in every flower in every fruit in every blade of grass in the song of every bird which sings in the power of every creature that we see on the face of this planet is the grace and beauty and glory and majesty of my rab jalla jalaluhu in every piece of knowledge that he has given us in every equipment that he has given us thanks to which we see things which we would not have been able to see without that equipment as a photographer as an amateur photographer this is always in my mind that alhamdulillah for these cameras for these lenses without which we would not have been able to see the khudrat of allah subhanahu wa taala so close up and in such beautiful detail yeah i can go on but there's no point i mean my point is do it for yourself so khashiyat of allah by reflecting on the glory and majesty and power and authority and and magnificence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hope of allah by shukr by being thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that he gave us and for everything that he did not give us thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reflect in your life i've sent you so many times may allah may allah forgive me many duas that we made in our childhood today i'm sure many of you if not all of you can reflect on those duas and say alhamdulillah allah did not give me what i asked because if allah had given me what i asked today i would have been making dua to be relieved from that to thank allah also for the suffering and the pain that you might be in remembering that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he said that even a thorn does not prick the foot of a believer except that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sin for him so even in the pain ma'al usri yusra ma with the difficulty is the relief what is the ma'iyat of the usr with the yusr of the difficulty with the ease 
The ma'iyat is that the difficulty makes us remember Allah. May Allah forgive us. Many of us, if not all of us. We forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are happy. When we are happy, we have a party. We are too busy being happy. How many of us fall in sujood and say, Alhamdulillah, 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 Ya Rab. You gave me a wife for whom I make your shukr. <coughs> she is teaches me to be, to give you shukr. Or Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, you gave me a wife who teaches me to have sabr. Because you did not say ma shakirin, you say ma ma sabirin. Inna Allah ma sabirin. Alhamdulillah. And for all the men who are laughing at this, exact same thing the woman can say for you. Oh Allah. Alhamdulillah, you gave me a husband, and I thank you for this husband. Alhamdulillah. Or oh Allah, Alhamdulillah, you gave me a husband who is teaching me to be sabir. And if you are a husband who is teaching your wife to be sabir, think about that. There's a, there's a second opposite side to the story as well. And so also for the women. But seriously, shukr. Khashat of Allah through introspection, reflection, tafakkur, tadabbur. Hub of Allah through tashakkur. Shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When these two are put together, what do you get? You get taqwa. You get taqwa. And what is tawakkul then? Because the topic is today, taqwa and tawakkul. What is tawakkul? Tawakkul is the reward. Tawakkul is the reward of taqwa. Tawakkul is the result of taqwa. Tawakkul is the reward of taqwa. You don't have to work for tawakkul. Tawakkul happens. What is the reward for lighting a lamp? Light. No. So if, I, if, you are, if you are sitting there with a lamp in your, in your hand and you say, I'm working on light. I'm working to have light. What will I tell you or what will you tell me? You will say, light the lamp. Light the lamp. Do whatever you need to do to light that lamp. Alhamdulillah, you will have light. Right? My brothers and sisters, ask yourself this question. This is the meaning of living Islam. What is living Islam? Living Islam to, is to understand this and to live our lives according to this. Work on khashyat. Work on Allah's hub. Put together makes taqwa. The attitude of ubudiyat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this attitude of ubudiyat means what? It means that you will do everything only and only according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the meaning of taqwa. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna ma kana qawla al-mu'minina idha du'u ila Allahi wa rasulihi liyahkuma baynahum an yaqulu sam'ana wa a'tana. Wa ula'ika humul muflihoon. Wa man yuti illaha wa rasulahu wa yakhsha allaha wa yattaqhi fa ula'ika humul faizoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the only saying of the believers, which is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only saying of the faithful believers, when they are called to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa to judge between them, meaning that when there is a hukum of Allah, when there is a sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where there is a ruling of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before them, the only thing that is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sign of the believer is what? That they yaqulu samana wa atana. They say, we hear and we obey. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa ula'ika humul muflihun. These are the ones who are successful. The word used is muflihun, falah. 
So when the person is successful, what does it mean? Fala is success in one test, but it's not freedom from the test, freedom from being tested. So every decision, every decision must be according to the hukum of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah This is fala. So he's successful in decision after decision. But once he's successful in one decision, is another one going to come? Yes. So he has to do it again and again and again until he meets his Rabb Jalla Jalaluhu. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa ma laha wa rasulahu, The one who obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa yakshallaha wa yattaqhi. Who has the khashyat of Allah in his heart and he or she has taqwa meaning they are living their life according to this standard to say my rab should be pleased with me Allah did not say muflihun faizun what is faiz faiz is freedom from being tested final success after which there is no test therefore taqwa produces this feeling and I call tawakkul as the reward because what did Allah say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ هَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِدْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلَ لَاللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهُ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and whoever has taqwa of Allah, now Allah is talking about rewards. Rewards. Whoever has taqwa, meaning the person is living his or her life according to only one rule, which is, does it please Allah? Whoever has taqwa, Allah will make a way out for him from every difficulty. This is the meaning of what I mentioned to you. Conditions may not change, but they will not affect you. Alhamdulillah. They will not affect your, your loved ones. Alhamdulillah. Even if the conditions don't change, we ask for conditions to change, but even if that doesn't happen, still you will be free from that. Inshallah, al -Mustah. Because my Rabb Jalla Jalla said that. Whoever has taqwa of Allah, he will make a way out for him to get out of every difficulty. And see these beautiful words. وَيَرْزُقُهُمْ <coughs> وَيَرْزُقُهُمْ Min haythu la yahtasib. Why why is Allah saying this? Why does Allah why does Allah not subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why does he not say Allah will give him as much as he wants, as much as he needs? No. He will give him from sources that he cannot imagine. Allah is cutting ourselves and cutting our connection with everything in this world. Allah is saying, once you have taqwa, once you reach that level, don't worry about conditions. They don't apply to you. Ha! They don't apply to you. Because your Rabb will give you from sources you cannot imagine. Conditions won't apply to you. There will be a different thing happening for you. A different set of rules for you, inshallah. I make dua for all of you for this, inshallah. <laughs> And the one who has tawakkur on Allah, which is the result of having this taqwa, khashyat, hub, together, taqwa, result, reward, tawakkur. And the one who has a tawakkur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has finished and removed all boundaries. Allah will become sufficient for this person. For what? Everything. 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 Sufficient for his dunya, sufficient for his akhirah. Sufficient for him to be protected from harm. The biggest harm is disobedience of Allah. The biggest harm is sin. Sufficient to be protected from the evil of everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi taam mati min kulli ma khalaq. He has the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of everything he created. And that's the meaning of فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Allah will become sufficient for that person. 
And verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accomplish His purpose. Yeah, it's very clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Allah will accomplish His purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's purpose will not be changed because it doesn't please somebody else. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set a measure for all things. My brothers and sisters, I want to end with this and say, please understand this. What must we work on? Khashyat of Allah and Hub of Allah. Awe and majesty of Allah and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you work on awe and majesty of Allah? By reflection, introspection, by reading the Quran, by reflecting on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our connection with Him. How do you work and develop hope and love of Allah? By shukr. By cons being conscious of the blessings of Allah and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those blessings over and over and over. How many times must I thank Allah for breathing? Every time I take a breath. Every time I take a breath. And knowing that Allah is rewarding me for this. So what's the problem? And when I do these two things, taqwa. How do I measure my taqwa? By checking my life to say, what is my single overarching criterion of approval? Giving myself permission to do anything. What is it? Does it please Allah? Does it please Allah? If it pleases Allah, I will do it. If it does not please Allah, I will not do it. And what's the reward of this? Tawakkul. Allah will put tawakkul in your heart, inshallah. You will become mutawakkil, inshallah. And that is why the beautiful hadith of Rasulullah, which uh, many of you have heard, narrated by Ibn Abbas, I want to end with this. Rasulullah said, Nations were displayed before me. One or two prophets would pass by with a few of their followers. A prophet would pass by accompanied by nobody. He's talking about the MBI, I remember. Yeah, not ordinary people. Then a big crowd of people passed in front of me. I asked them, who are they? Are they my followers? It was said, no. It is Musa alayhi salam and his followers. When he's right. He's talking about people following the Nabi. Meaning what? Meaning these are people going into Jannah. Right? Alhamdulillah. So he said, these are the people of Musa alayhi salam, which are the Bani Israel who followed Musa alayhi salam in excellence. And then Allah subhanahu then it was, and then Nabi said, then it was said to me, look at the horizon. And behold, there was a multitude of people filling the horizon. Then it was said to me, look there and there and there about the stretching sky. Behold, there was a multitude filling the horizon. Then it was said to me that in your nation, this is your nation, this is your nation, out of whom 70,000 will enter Jannah without Hisab. I ask Allah to include all of you among those. 70,000 will enter Jannah without Hisab. And then Rasulullah having said this, he got up and entered his house. He left the masjid and he entered his house. Now the people started talking, Ibn Abbas says, he says that people started uh, talking and they said, who are these people that Nabi Wasallam mentioned 70,000? Uh, then there's some people said, well, this uh, maybe it's ourselves. Uh, we are the Sahaba of Nabi Wasallam. We brought Iman on him. Uh, somebody says, uh, or maybe it's our children who were born in, uh, in an Islamic uh, household in Islamic times. Uh, we were born in the times of Jahiliyyah and so on. The Nabi Wasallam overheard this conversation from inside his house. So he came back outside and he said to them, those 70,000 are the mutawakkilun. He said, these are the people who have tawakkur on Allah. They asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what is that? Nabi Wasallam said, they are the people who don't use amulets, who don't use taviz and so on. He said, they are the people who do, who do not treat themselves with ruqya and do they, they don't believe in good luck and bad luck. They don't believe in wastu and feng shui. He didn't use this word, but I'm saying that today in, in our in our life today, if they did not believe in good omen, bad omen, cat cross the road, crow flow from the left to the right, and so on and so forth. They did not believe in good and bad omens, and and they also did not get themselves cauterized or branded. If those were some of the cures of those times, uh, and and they put their trust only in the Rabb Jalla Jalaluhu. They are the mutawakkilun. They are the people who have tawakkul on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. On that, at that moment, there was this Sahabi 
such beautiful people who take advantage of the situation. Uh, Ukasha bin Muhsin, anhu, he stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, am I one of these people? Make dua that I should be one of them. Ya Rasulullah, am I one of these people? Rasulullah said, you are one of those people. Then another person got up. He said, Ya Rasulullah, am I one of them? Rasulullah said, Ukasha has anticipated you. Ukash has gone ahead. This hadith is muttafaqun alayh, agreed upon. It is in Bukhari, Muslim, uh, Musnad Imam Ahmad, Bayhaqi, uh, Tabarani, uh, and other uh, Hakim and others. So Alhamdulillah, this is a uh, very sound hadith, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the mutawakkilun. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct and direct our focus so that we understand that we are his slaves, not his servants. And that we start behaving like his slaves, meaning having complete and total faith in him and obeying only him, Jalla Jalalhu, and nobody else. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to keep us in a state of, uh, of uh, good health and in a state of, um, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, a state which is laced with his uh, ni'mat throughout our life as long as we live and to keep us free from all uh, dependence on anyone and anything else other than him Jalla Jalalu, and to take us in that state where we are glorifying him and we are worshiping him and to be pleased with that glorification and worship we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with you all and never to be displeased wa sallallahu ala nabiyil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The uh, first question, mashallah, is from my... Uh, I was about to say dearest friend, but uh, since there are other people also from Dhaka who will be watching this, I don't want to get into a controversy, so I will say one of my dearest friends, but Maher knows. Uh, Maher Khan. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you and... Uh, Aisha and your little one are all very well, inshallah. Um, his question is, how can I hack my mind to be able to pray tahajjud regularly? Well, uh, the, the simplest way is to remember that uh, one day you and I will die and make this dua and say, oh Allah, take my soul when I'm in sajda in tahajjud. Bas. This is enough, inshallah. Right? This is enough. Make this dua and say, Oh Allah, when my time comes, whenever it is, may Allah give you a long life with good health and iman, inshallah. And with with dhikr and with izzah. When my time comes, take my soul in tahajjud, in sudud. Then believe me, you will never miss a tahajjud for the rest of your life, inshallah. Second question um, is uh, the question from Abdullah Jatakara. That's a good question. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, ya Sheikh. Could you please let us know about Rukhya? Can we do Rukhya for ourselves or not? I heard we cannot get Rukhya done on us by others, and that was the limitation. Please uh, sh uh, explain. Now, um, I mentioned to you the Hadith of Islam, where he mentioned the people who uh, will be in Jannah, inshallah, mutawakkilun, and he mentioned specifically that among them people who do not do Rukhya. Now, that, uh, however, is not a prohibition on Rukhya, so you can do Rukhya. The uh, best Rukhya that we know is what Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, we know from the Hadith of Aisha uh, Siddiqa, she said that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would, would, uh, he would do it her, himself or later on when he, when he was not well, he, she, he, she would do it for him, uh, which is that they would recite the Muaddathain, the last two surahs of the Quran, uh, Al-Falaq and Nas. And of course, we also have other narrations to say, also Surah Al-Ikhlas, also Surah Al-Kafirun, uh, and then blow on the hand and then pass the hand over the body, inshallah, this can be done. Uh, but I would, I would say, Alhamdulillah, uh, follow the hadith of Islam. At the end of the day, you are doing the ruqya or whatever for what? To get a cure. Who cures? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures. So make dua, that's more than enough, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one to cure and Allah will cure. 
because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us. So we don't need to do anything. But if you want to do, okay, it is not haram, it is not prohibited, you can do that. And this is the best way of doing it, inshallah. Uh, please do not fall into, uh, today this ruqya thing has become a business. There are people who are running businesses on this ruqya business, right? Uh, jinn and ruqya. So, so removing jinn, I think the biggest jinns are the ones who are doing this stuff. Please. To get out of all this, we are we are we are not a religion of uh, mythology. We are not a religion of superstition. We are a religion of, of reality. And the reality is the la nafi wa la illallah. There is nobody except Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who can cure and who can harm or who can benefit. No one else. So what what is the problem? You know, just do what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us to do, which is worship Him, ask Him. There's no need. We don't need all these magical formulas. We just, I want something. Ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, like, give me this. Khalas. Right? Just ask Allah. Um, now, the, another anonymous attendee, how do we strike a balance between having tawakkul and taking matters into our own hands by doing something about it? Well, mashallah, beautiful question, which illustrates the mistaken concept and idea about tawakkul. Listen to today, my further reminder today. That's it. Alhamdulillah, I, there are no coincidences. But just before this uh, this uh, seminar, I recorded a further reminder. Just listen to that. Please understand. The tawakkul is to trust in Allah. When you are saying taking mantar into your own hand, you are saying that now Allah can't do it, so I'm going to do it. Some, I'm going to do it myself. Now, obviously, you're not saying that, but that's how it seems to be, right? What is the meaning of taking matters into your own hands? Your hands are bound by the will of Allah. So what matters will you take into your hands? What hands? Please, there is no balance between tawakkul and this. Tawakkul is a state of being where we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not mean, I know why you're asking this question, because you have been taught, like I was taught, like all of us are taught, that tawakkul means to sit on your backside and do nothing. There's a beautiful story in the Sirah. Umar al-Khattab came into the masjid once and he saw some people sitting there. Some young people sitting there. He said, why are you here? Why are you not at work? Why don't you go work? They said, Nahanu mutawakkilun. We have tawakkul on Allah. Sayyidina Omar whacked them with his, with his uh, durra and he said, get out of here. He said, Allah does not send down gold and silver from the sky. Right? Tawakkul means what? Tawakkul means to do the effort and then understand that the effort will not yield results. Results come from Allah. Tawakkul is what Rasulullah had when he was standing in, in Dua in Badr after having made all the effort, arranged everything. And then he stood and said, Oh Allah, you promised me. Oh Allah, you promised me. Oh Allah, give me. Oh Allah, give me. That is Tawakkul. So how can you take matters into your own hand? Your own hand is the hand that is raised in Dua. And Tawakkul does not mean to sit and do nothing. No. Make full effort. And tawakkul is the tawhid of the heart. Tawakkul is what tells you at the end of that effort that this effort will not yield results. Results come only and only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is my, this is my uh, dear friend Joni from UK. Jazakumullah khairan for uh, the, the English translation of the Quran that you sent me. May Allah bless you. What practical things can we do to increase our tawakkul? Please give us some real life examples there, Sheikh. Now, first real life example is listen to the khutbah. Listen to the lecture uh, clearly. I did all of this already. What you must do, I've explained that to you. So now you go back and you listen to the khutbah again. And if you don't understand it again, and if you don't understand it again, and if you don't understand it again, right? <laughs> do that. Then that I've given you all live examples. Huh? Did I give you a dead example? So listen to the khutbah again and again and again. Jazakallah khairan. Just because I love you very much, it doesn't mean I won't tell you what I have to tell you. Um, Farooq, Salaam Alaikum. We have taqwa and trust in Allah, but still we keep doing sins. Does it mean our taqwa is incomplete? What can we do about it? What do you have to say or do? You ask yourself, does it please Allah? If the answer is yes, you do it. If the answer is no, you don't do it. If the answer is I don't know, then you find out before you do it. Right? So if you are following this, how can you commit sins? How can anybody commit sins? I want to do some, if I want to backbite somebody, I want to do ghibah, what do I ask myself? Before I do that, what do I ask? Will Allah be pleased? What is the answer? No. So do I do it or I don't do it? I don't do it. 
So if somebody says, I have taqwa, but I am doing sins, what is the answer? You do not have taqwa. You do not have taqwa. So, work on taqwa. How do you work on taqwa? Listen to this speech all over again. I'm not going to make the same speech all over again. Jazakumullah khairan.